I've been waiting for this night. Tension is so high. You know, Baylor is, is out to get Sutherland. Sutherland is out to get Baylor. It's just a matter of who wants it more. Baylor or Sutherland. That's it. Welcome back to the Jean Pod Van Dam cast, patreon.com slash podbros, Amazon link at podbros.com. Click that link, doesn't cost you anything, helps us out in the long run. And please rate us five stars and leave a review on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher app. Try to do that as fast as I could. <laughs> you guys deserve it. I did it under 30 seconds, so I got myself yeah. the Barry Horowitz right there. <laughs> anyway, today we are reviewing Hard Target 2, where they really missed saying Harder Target. Yeah, or just... Hard Targeter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harder Targeter 3. <laughs> uh, the 2016 rated R hour and 44 minute action thriller in which retired mixed martial artist Wes the Jailer Baylor Scott Atkins <laughs> can't refuse a million dollar purse he's offered for one final bout in Myanmar. But when he arrives for the fight, he learns he's been tricked into becoming the target of a human hunt. Carrying only water and a ruby-filled money belt for the last person standing, Wes must outsmart the heavily armed group that has paid to kill him. As he fights for his life in the treacherous jungle terrain, the hunters become the hunted. Dun, dun, dun. That, was, that was good. That was yeah, a it was. Uh, it really explained the movie, unlike some. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I did a decent job there. Now I didn't know that this was 2016. Me I, either. I figured it was 2017 here, mm -hmm. but it, it's on Netflix now. That's kind of why we're doing it. And I guess before we get into it, since we're waiting for Blackwater to finally come out, it supposedly releases this month in the UAE. Don't know about the U.S. I saw that uh, Saban, 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 Saban. Sa Saban, they bought like the rights for it, the distributor really? rights in the U.S. I haven't heard from Saban in a long time. I know time. that's what. I, yeah, man. Like I, I don't know if they're the ones who are still doing uh, Power Rangers, or if they uh, sold it off. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, if they were smart, they didn't sell it off. Yeah, I know. They, well, they're still making Power Rangers. Yeah. So good on them. I don't know. I heard that they were kind of. If you read the like the original history behind the Power Rangers, when they what they did to the poor kids, like yeah. here, uh, they kind of fucked them things. over, man. Mm -hmm. Money wise, definitely. Yeah, the Blue Ranger. He said he was uh, discriminated for being gay. Yeah, like Billy Yost. Yeah, stuff. man. Yeah, you and got. He only has like one half of an eyebrow on each side of his head. It looks really weird. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Yeah, he has oh, like wow. this part of his eyebrow, like the center part of the eyebrow. And it just, I don't know if he just shaves it that way. It, looked, weird. it looks weird. Isn't he bald now too? Or like shaved head? I didn't. Did I haven't he... seen him with a okay. shaved head. I, I I can't remember. I could be could be wrong. But anyway, enough <laughs> about the Power Rangers. So if you don't know by now, we are now doing the sequels and prequels to all of Van Damme's films uh, since we are trying to wait for all the new ones that come out. And we decided to start with Hard Target 2, not to follow in Van Damme's own filmography, but basically the ease of access. And it's on Netflix. We don't know how much longer it was on Netflix. So we were like, let's just do it now and get it out of the way. And uh, Scott Atkins plays Wes Baylor. Kind of nice because for a sequel, it's good to see that it's a guy that has been in quite a few Van Damme movies yes, with them. About 20-ish. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, and and basically, we don't need to read off his his list. Go listen We've to already it. read it. Yeah, I know. Plenty <laughs> of times. Amarin Trollvabule plays Wynn, which is kind of weird that they have him booked. He was in The Prince and Me 4. <laughs> I have loved uh, and Hard Target too. That's what he's known for. Hmm. Tira Chotuko played Thai youth. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading these. In, Is like, that the order, one who uh, nearly got shot at the end? I, of the that's movie. what I'm assuming. But the dude, <laughs> the dude looks like he's 32 in this photo, though. Like that kid grew up really fast. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, yeah. why. Why he was is like ranked third here with billing. I I don't know. I'm not. I'm not even gonna say what he was in. <laughs> uh, Robert Nepper played Aldridge. He was in Prison Break as Theodore Teabag. Transporter <laughs> 3 as Johnson. Hitman as Yuri Markov. Let's see. He I'm has 133 he... credits to his name. I'm assuming he plays a lot of bad guys. I, I can only assume. Oh, you know what? I think I think he was uh, familiar with me. He's in I, Zombie, the TV series Angus McDonough. I, I don't know how to say his last name, but I, if I recall, that might have been like the head of the energy drink company or whatnot. Yeah. I, I could be wrong, but yeah, he, if that was him, he played a very bad guy in there too. 
Okay, Theodore Teabag Bagwell. <laughs> that's the full <laughs> name. Still not good, though. <laughs> Spirit Riding Free, that Spirit Horse, uh, a TV series uh, off that movie. That's amazing. The Dating Game Killer TV movie, The Orville, which was uh, the... What's the his Star face? Trek, uh, this, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Um, what's his name? I made Family Guy. Yeah, yeah. That, that's he was in Twin Peaks as Rodney Mitchum. Oh wow! Fate, uh, which is just a short from Dust Till Dawn, the series. Gary Willett, which is also on Netflix. If you uh, check that out, I have not. Uh, it's pretty decent. The first, is it? I watched the first season. Uh, very interesting how they do it. Uh, Jack Reacher never go back as General Harkness. American Horror Story as the lieutenant for one episode Ooh, in 2015. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know if I, I watched know. that season. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Hawaii Five O, NCIS. All right. There we mm-hmm. go. So we'll, we'll we'll stop it at that. Jeffrey Giuliano plays Vermilion. I don't remember who that was. Was Vermilion the uh, bullfighter? No, no, I, that's what I thought it was, but that does not look like the bullfighter whatsoever. Here, take a look. Oh, you know what? I think he played the guy who was like, I'm the chief. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, he was in Trill Beals as the writer, Monks and Mama something, Frank the Farang, or Farang, stoned as writer. I don't know. I guess he's a writer in a lot of stuff, a lot of movies. Hmm. Uh, Rona Mitra played Sophia. She was the the real baddie girl, the only baddie. The one uh, with female. daddy issues. Oh no way! She was uh, Sonia in Underworld Rising of the Lichens. Lichens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not that I've watched. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was. In, this is what made me go. No way. She was in Doomsday. Eden Sinclair. Did really? You ever see yeah, I watched Doomsday. <laughs> I have a soft spot for Doomsday. It was. I, a, it was a romp. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. It was absolutely so I, ridiculous. I, I just randomly caught like you know I caught it about. 20 minutes in and I was just like what the fuck is going on that's why <laughs> I ended up I watching the it. whole damn movie <laughs> yep, that's well that's exactly it draws you in what a fucking crazy movie yeah that it's, is. it's it's a hoot what oh, yeah dude I, I the plot it. is paper thin it's, yeah it's like... oh everything <laughs> All of a sudden, you're in like the fucking medieval times. Yeah, you know? it made like no the sense. The world. What the hell's going on? No, not at all. It, it's but... so bad, it's good. It's oh, the... exactly, <laughs> exactly. She is in a movie for 2018 called Game Over, man. <laughs> As the, uh, Bill, the Bill Paxton story. I, I, or... hope, I hope so. I really do. <laughs> Let's see. She was in the TV series The Strain as Charlotte. Oh, no kidding. Uh, the Last Ship TV series as Dr. Rachel Scott, uh, which must have been pretty uh, pretty big because they made a prequel to it. Uh, oh, that was a miniseries, though. The Loft as Allison Van Owen. Let's see. Something. Oh, I got excited for a second. The Gates uh, TV <laughs> series. They made a TV series about the gate? Oh, no. <laughs> never mind. We got another gate. <laughs> These poor Canadian kids are in trouble. <laughs> Uh, she was in the number twenty three as Laura Tollins, the uh, Jim Carrey film. That weird is garbage. That weird. Yeah, I I remember seeing it at theaters, and that's all I remember about yeah, it. Yeah, I was really. just like, Jesus Christ, this plot makes no sense. Yeah, Boston Legal as Tara Wilson, Nip Tuck as Kit McGraw, Highwaymen, Molly Poole, Spartacus, Verania, and I'm gonna stop right there with that one. Samira Morrison played Madden, which does not look like the same dude at all because he had a shaved head here. He, yeah, he looks very different. Yeah, he actually looks very like handsome and rugged in his IMDb photo. Very handsome. Very uh, different from his character in Hard Target mm-hmm. too, where he just looked like a psychopath basically. Uh, he was in Once We Were Warriors as Jake Hickey or Heck. <laughs> Star How's it Wars. Spelled? He was Jango Fett. What? No shit. He was Jango Fett in Star Wars oh, Episode shit. Two. And, so uh, was he all the Cody? He was Commander Cody. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That's no wonder he looked familiar. It's Commander Cody. Fucking A, I man. I feel like I've seen his face thousands of times. Yeah, man. Uh, Adam Saunders plays Esperato, the bullfighter. Okay. He uh, he was in Home and Away as Corey Watkins. This is not... I, I think there's a different Home and Away, right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the Confession is Dale and Blue Water High is Heath Carroll. And let's see. I'm, I'm trying to... Th- think who all were the bad bad boys uh we had johnny sutherland who spoilers scott atkins kills accidentally <laughs> uh, as troy honey or troy honeyset as johnny sutherland he was in the combination two as rick and superman meets batman what 
Superman. A twenty minute short action Superman movie. Oh, it was one of those uh, internet made fan videos. I, yeah, I was gonna say it. I guess so. Whatever. Okay. The director was Roel Rainey. Writer's Oh, Matt that's uh, Sam Raimi's brother, I think. <laughs> his, his adopted brother. <laughs> Dominic Morgan and others. Uh Roel, let's see. He has, is known for Admiral Inhumans. The ABC TV show that didn't it get canceled? It didn't. It didn't it? I thought it got canceled. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, it was really bad from yeah, what I saw. Like only like three <laughs> episodes or something. I don't know. It and was oh, what a stinker! Black Sails, two thousand seventeen. Oh no, kidding! So, yeah, yeah. There you go. I that's uh very much yeah. That show had a lot of I, sex in it. There was a picture for Justice League up on his thing, so now I'm wondering why he was on the. Justice League, Did or if that it? was just like, oh, hey, this is news, because, you know, comic books, so. Yep. Crazy oh, thing. oh, beautiful. He directed The Man with the Iron Fist, too. <laughs> awesome. Have you seen it? Yes, I did. How was it? I did. Uh, what you would expect. Yep, what you would expect. <laughs> yep. uh, don't go into it if you hated the first one. <laughs> I'll just say that, you know. The like, second one's not going to do you any much better. Uh, SEAL Team 8 behind enemy lines, 12 rounds, two Seal Team reloaded. Eight. Oh, man. A lot, of, a lot of sequels to movies. Dead in Tombstone, Death Race Inferno, the uh, 2013, The Scorpion King 3, Battle for Redemption. That's one that didn't have The Rock in it, right? Yep. Right. Well, one of, yeah, I don't think yeah. any of them had The Rock besides the first no, one, No, just right? the first yeah. Scorpion King, yeah. Death Race 2, The Marine 2. Okay, so he's got some WWE ties. Pistol Whipped with Steven Seagal. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're done. Let's see. Okay. I spent right. once again way too much time on the cast, <laughs> especially for a movie that's not like with Van Damme at all in it. Yep. So into the movie. We open up with some pigeons in a cage. Yes. And uh, I made the reference is, is this kind of a joke for Hard Target? Like pigeons crapping on her target? <laughs> is, like, is, it, is it trying to reach? I almost felt like it was trying to reach there. We get a chase scene right off the get-go. Some guys get arrowed while another takes off. Uh, a lot of arrows in this. Yes. And... No, 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 they're bolts because they're coming from a crossbow. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they're <laughs> bolts. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. There's a lot of fucking crossbows in this. Like, yep. I apologize for the use of the F word, but like, that's how many <laughs> crossbows there were. Uh, I'm like, oh, okay, makes sense. It opens up very similar to the first one of the guy trying to run away from people and almost making it and then dying. Guy screams and shoots the dude with the crossbow. There's another guy still trying to get away. He's climbing up in an old building. He jumps down. He hits everything on the way down. Starts running again. <laughs> guy shoots an arrow at him, and it transitions into the title screen. Hard target two. Six months earlier, we were in Las Vegas. West the Jailer Baylor is at a weigh-in for an MMA fight. Johnny Solid Gold, Gold Sutherland is his opponent. Wondering what's going to go on here. It looks just like an everyday normal MMA fight. Mm -hmm. Shows the fights in a ring, not a cage. Very, you know, so it's like pride or something. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, like a takeoff of pride. Uh, first round looks like it's going to Johnny or um, uh, Wes. Second round looks like it's for Johnny. And then the third round, it kind of is like, hey, you know, he he needs to make make it here. And then I was wondering, I was like, is that Joe King in his corner? Was this Spider-Man <laughs> Joe King? I, I mean, I was going to look it up, but I'm just too lazy now, and I already spent all that time on gas. But I, I'm pretty sure that was Joe King, or if not, hmm. a very similar-looking dude. Anyway, uh, Baylor looks for the finish, hits him with a devastating crazy kick. Uh, Sutherland's girl runs to the ring. He's still down, and it looks like he's either dead or paralyzed. Uh, Scott Atkins is worried. The girlfriend is crying. And There's it's, confetti uh, everywhere. Confetti everywhere. Not much celebration now, though. And then we find out apparently that they were really good friends, like family. Yeah. So it was. It was like was that Wes's sister was Johnny's girlfriend or something? Because the way it was like made, you think that like yeah, like, I wasn't sure what they were like, going for. We're with family, that. Yeah. you know. They're talking the backstory here, and they really didn't talk more about it. it just no, made it sound like they were that, just really good friends that were fighting each other. Yeah, the whole. I mean, this is kind of just a back trip as to why he's. Ends up going to Southeast Asia, basically. Yeah, basically. It's just, hey, and you then know, he'll, you ha he'll have the occasional flashback about it. And, yeah. Uh, so he runs away from his problems like any grown man does when you <laughs> kill your friend in the ring. And it's, it's well, six months later in Bangkok, Thailand. He wakes up in my apartment. <laughs> 
liquor bottles, yep. liquor cans everywhere. Yeah, man. And white doves everywhere. Be- beautiful white doves. I mean, you could see that. That is totally I, your apartment. Every time I come <laughs> home, white doves, for whatever reason, are everywhere. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a big John Woo fan. <laughs> so when you come in, I jump out. Yep. Hand you two beer bottles <laughs> while making a flying leap with doves flying in the back. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, the doves, the white <laughs> doves in this film, too. It totally was a John Woo homage yep. to him, man, for real. Uh, he's sleeping, having nightmares as all these white doves shit all around him. <laughs> uh, he starts coughing when he gets up, and that's because he's inhaling bird poop. <laughs> yeah, that's not good for you. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, we are now at an underground fight scene. Uh, he kicks a dude that looked really damn good. Like I was yeah. kind of like, was this a Van Damme kick? Where it's like, I'm going <laughs> to find in the trivia, he really kicked the dude. <laughs> controlled kick. A controlled kick. Nine teeth time. were lost during that kick. Yeah, seriously, man. Uh, he easily takes the guy out, walks off. More drinking and drugs as the white doves move around. More fights. <laughs> He's getting beat up this time by a traditional Muay Thai fighter. He gets the upper hand, knocks him down into a hole. And then, like, that's it. <laughs> like a hole with like some slats over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And it's like, oh, that dude's dead. Oh, he's in the hole. Yep. Match uh, over. Match is over. Then there's another fight. This one's different. He's on top of a building on a glowing dance floor fighting a dude. Yeah, he was using was that. Doing, it was like that Brazilian was like, Yeah, he was yeah. like doing Muay Thai Capoeira. Like, yeah. I was just like, what? What's, what's going on here? And the, these guys are watching him, nods, and so you know something's up. Guy comes up to him after, tells him he won 3000 bucks off of him. And Scott Atkins is like, I already got paid. <laughs> he's like, not enough for this shit. Uh, Jonah Aldridge is the name, and he's like, hey, I want to give you a, a fight-off chance uh, in Myanmar for $500,000, and he's like, ah, no thanks, and his second-hand man in command is Madden, gives him their card, and... Wes just looks off in the distance and continues drinking. <laughs> I thought for a second he threw the card over the balcony, but it was like, nope, no, yeah. he's, just, he's, he's drinking, that's it. So we're back to the flashback of a beach house. He looks at the card. That's the whole thing, the premise between the two. He and Johnny, like, oh, hey, whoever wins has to buy the other a beach house or some some shit like that. Yeah. You know, there, was like, there, see, like, the, he didn't want to kill him because he was friends with him. Yeah. <laughs> that's yep. the main yep. point of their interaction. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for it. That's why I'm fighting people in underground fights in Myanmar right yep. now. Yep. <laughs> Not Thailand, so that's a nice little twist. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it went from Thailand to Myanmar. It I'm assuming like, it was probably right. filmed in Thailand. Oh, yeah, definitely. It definitely was. Myanmar was not really a good place to I, yeah, I hang out at at the time. Like, yeah, I know, man. A lot, I, a lot I, of social I, strife and governmental yeah. transitions. and Yeah, still with like uh, the whole Rambo 4 and all that. Yep. Like, yeah. It's still going as, on. Yeah, man. This movie actually had a lot of uh, parallels with the uh, with Rambo 2 mainly, but also yeah, Rambo man. 1 in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get into that later. Though. And I, I was just going to say, yep. Yeah, <laughs> totally, man. Okay, so... Uh, we're at some fancy building. There's some samurai suit armor just chilling there, and uh, the dude's making sushi to relax. <laughs> this is like this giant tuna on his table, and he's like... I wish I knew someone that made sushi just to relax. Seriously, dude. Seriously. Want to become friends with him? <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, Scott tells him, basically, I want $1 million cash up front, uh, no no win bonus bullshit, all this, no taxes, blah, blah, blah. Sounds like a deal. They are flying into Myanmar on a helicopter, and there's these little children monks playing uh, <laughs> soccer as they hover, uh, drive a Hummer over some sandbags <laughs> for no reason whatsoever yeah. besides to just drive it over the sandbags. Well, I mean, it can. It, yep, right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we wanted to show off. It was like, was this made when Hummer was finally a commercially released yeah, vehicle? I don't know. Hey, buy us, you know, buy this, uh, this. And it was an old Hummer too. It wasn't the new one. Huh? Yeah. So this movie would have been made. I'm assuming two years before it was released, around 2014 ish. That was around the time the H3 came out, right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, well, I think the H3 came out earlier, didn't it? I don't know. I can't remember Fuck either. Like, I know. Yeah. I, basically, <laughs> Hummer kind of released their commercial vehicles. At a time when it was like the gas prices yeah. soared, and then Hummer just basically went went yep. bust. Oh, what a shame! So yeah, I know, right? I, I always thought the coolest to... people in the world went <laughs> yeah, out and went... bought Hummers yep, and exactly. drove them. <laughs> yep. If you're not Arnold Schwarzenegger, get out of here. That's what I'm saying. We see, we get to meet up all these people, and uh, this the the main baddie. He pays off the general who's standing there. It's basically <laughs> all the military soldiers. He's like. Thank you for the donation. We accept on our <laughs> and on Myanmar's behalf. <laughs> like, yeah, it just paints a pretty picture. Oh of, yeah, uh, Burma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. So we see that we have a bullfighter, a father and son team, a daughter to the third richest oil baron in the world, 
And why did they then just call her the Baroness? I don't know. Oh, and I know. They were just like, oh. Or this she had just told the rights. Yeah, that's true, probably, <laughs> honestly. Uh, and some first-person shooter video game creator. Oh, yeah. And then, like, Scott West asks, he's like, so where's the ring? And they're like, you're standing at it. <laughs> These are your opponents. <laughs> and he's like, your objective is to get back to Thailand. They're like, what? And then they unveil the weapons. There's just a bunch and Scott Atkins is like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. See, at this point, I was just like, why even give him the pretense of agreeing to a fight? Like, why not just kidnap him and dump him? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, what? I mean, I realize, I guess it was, you know, the first movie was the same way, but the first movie made more sense because they didn't, like, get all these gigantic high profile guys. They just right, got yeah. people that seemed like decent candidates. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, you know. No diabetes in this one. <laughs> My biggest complaint about the movie, yeah. besides JCVD not being in it. Oh, I know, right? All of a sudden, two other dudes get thrown out of a truck, and they start to run, and then a guy nails him with a bolt from a crossbow. <laughs> no weapon for Scott. He has a two-minute head start and a water bottle, and his basically belt with the jewels on it, the rubies. <laughs> and uh, he just stands there for like a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> While the dude's counting down, he's like, 70 seconds, 90, 90 seconds. No, I'm not doing seconds. that. This no, is yeah. yeah. What the hell is wrong with you people? This is bullshit. I didn't <laughs> sign up for this shit. And the military surrounds him when he tries to leave, and he's like, ah, oh, fuck. And he's like, what's the matter? Want me to ring the bell? <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> and so he takes off the rubies and the water bottle. And then a dude just comes out of nowhere, calls himself Chief Lord Maduka. <laughs> no clue who this fucker is. Uh, there's no cell phones in the hunt, because or no video cameras yep. or anything like that. There's a reason for that. Oh, well, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to have too much evidence of a uh, exactly. hunting people for sport. Yeah, exactly. So uh, everyone puts their cell phones in like this uh, storage locker bin. And uh, he totally, the chief dude, Laduka, is like, clever lad. And I'm like, is this like a Jurassic Park reference? Do they, do they try to yeah. just, you know, so. Yeah, what the hell was that guy, like, what was he doing? Was he? He was like, sorry, I'm late. And then yeah. he's like, so, oh, okay, Laduka. And he's like, chief head, Laduka. Like, All right, fucker. Scott tries to fill his water bottle up in a water, and then he sees a dead body, and he's like, oh. And so he goes ahead of the dead body and fills it up on the other side. <laughs> Goes to take a drink, and he gets shot at from uh, the chief dude on top of the waterfall, shooting at him. Hits the water bottle, it like ricochets. Uh, Scott hides behind a tree, then goes under the water as the guy comes down, and uh, he pulls out an electric cattle prod yes, in the water. In the water. In the water. And it works. And it works. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a knife fight. Scott disarms him, knocks him into the onto a rock. I thought it was gonna be a better death scene than this. Yeah. Fucking just hits him and he falls onto the rock and kills himself. Yep. Uh, accidental head bashing. The the programmer we see is filming in a pouch. Uh oh. Dun dun dun. We see Scott's GPS watch isn't working. The guys find him. He's swimming, getting arrow shot at him from the crossbows, now gunshots, and then a grenade gun launcher. Yes. Just like boom. Yeah, he, they had a pretty weird mix of weapons, like Yeah. Like, I was figured, okay, they're using crossbows because they don't want to be too loud. And then, oh, yeah. pull, pull out the grenade line. Yep, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Never mind. So Scott goes rolling down the falls into an elephant gang, like <laughs> a gang of elephants. I don't know. What what do you call a flock of elephants? Um, a herd? I think you're right. I think it is a herd. Uh, I think you're correct. Uh, there's probably some weird, like, you know, a, a contingent or something. Oh, right. Like, no, yeah. I know. Exactly. Like a, yeah. Anyway, uh, he meets a lady who's just chilling by him. And uh, the elephant grabs his watch, and she's like, speaks to the elephant, like, "No, no." And the elephant gives her the watch back. And, I would have uh, liked it better if he, the elephant, had just worn the watch for the rest of the movie. Oh, I know that's been sweet. Yeah. That'd have been awesome. And her, she tells him basically her brother was being hunted too. Uh, the border's not that way. Follow me, and you know she just rides along for the rest of the film. So yep. Aldridge brings out the vehicles now, which are basically motorcycles and ATVs. Uh, meanwhile, we hear she and her brother grew up there. They got involved in something. Her brother was doing drug runs, apparently, yeah. I guess. Okay. I mean, that's par for the course in yeah, man. Southeast Asia, according yeah. to uh, these well, films. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, at the time, too, the triangle, the, the whatever the, what do they call it? Like the CIA called it like the Eastern Asian Triangle or something, uh -huh. the poppy fields, basically, yep. the heroin smuggling. Uh, anyway, uh she says when someone disappears from our village, we know they're being hunted. And 
uh, we get the lines of like best fighters always have something to fight for and she's like well what are you fighting for and he's silent like, he tell her, yeah, I, <laughs> beach house <laughs> And then we see that they have a drone. Uh, she shows him some ruins that lead the way to the border. Her name is Ta. He tries shaking her hand. She just bows, and then motorcycles show up, two of them. Scott does a double kick to the motorcycle helmets, and the dudes just fall <laughs> yeah. off the bikes, and, and that's it. <laughs> that was hilarious. Another chase. He jumps on a bike himself, and now that uh, evil lady is chasing after yes. him. Oh, here comes like the cheesiest oh, part God. in the whole damn movie. Yeah, she has guns mounted, like these grenade missile launchers on her bike. She shoots at him, causing explosions. They're at some building. They decide to play chicken with one another. He shoots a net at her. She drops, takes off her jacket, launches a missile. She pulls out her mini crossbows. Yeah. Yeah, and then she like the he shoots a grenade or whatever. Her bike explodes four yeah. feet away from her while she walks slowly yeah, and draws yeah, her crossbows exactly. yep. and shoots them in like two opposite directions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the father and son duo get off their bike. Uh, like he calls it a bike. The son does, but it's an ATV. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, aren't we worried about the motorcycle or something?" I was like, "What?" Anyway, uh, they're chasing after the girl for whatever reason. Yeah. She's not a part of it. Now they're chasing after her. She runs by them. She takes down the son, fights with the dad. He's beating her up. He's about to rape her. The yeah. son's like, "Does I don't want anything to do with this. She bites him in the crotch while they're fighting, uh, while the son runs away. And his dad's like, huh? <laughs> and uh, we we hear uh, the the lady talking to uh, Wes saying, the side effect of side effect of being the only child of one of the greatest big game hunters in the world is wanting to hunt for humans. And, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, I can attest to that. Yeah, and then he goes, daddy issues, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and he kicks her through a wall. Yeah. And then... Is that real enough for you? <laughs> he takes off. She chases after him. So we're back with the son by the ATV. He gets his throat kicked in by Scott. He chases after Ta. She fucked up the dad pretty bad and stabbing him to death. Karma's a bitch. Yeah. Uh, the belt and rubies are on the ground at this time. The son wakes up. Aldridge is treating him like a dog, man. He's like, yeah, he's putting his nose into his dad's carcass, basically. <laughs> Did you do this? You know, you like, think you know? I don't know. These are his customers. It'd be a little yeah, nicer I know. Yeah, being a little nicer. You know, your dad just died, and uh, you know, there's such things as PTSD and whatnot. So no, no that's, Aldridge that's... is like, fuck <laughs> off. Basically, uh, you know, calls him a pussy, and uh, the girl is that's the funny one. She's like, why don't you run home to your mom? Mommy. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, dang. Everyone's Rang. badass here. <laughs> uh, Aldridge crunches a scorpion with his bare hand while talking about dealing death. <laughs> so we see Scott's hurt and needs to be treated. Todd needs it. She's like, I know a place. She makes him some medicine. Show me your wound. He's like, uh, she's giving him the eyes. He does. He tells her he wants to buy a house by the sea. She wants to buy a village. She's cleaning the wound, putting stuff on it, and then goes to pray. She's like, come, show some respect. He stands next to her, and then he's like, ah, I'll get down on my knees, and a butterfly floats off the statue. <laughs> What's that smell? It smells like gasoline. Landmines. Yeah, <laughs> you know, in logical conclusion. Yeah, yeah, there's explosions <laughs> all around. There's like a dead yak. There's a blown up Jeep. And yeah, I made mean, like yeah, small gate like and the landmines weren't buried. They're just yeah, sticking no, they're out just of the ground. There. Yeah, okay, yeah. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> all like... right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just watch where you're looking. There's a right there sticking out. Yeah, I know, out. right? Yeah, they're sticking out of the ground, and they're These brand ga- new. They're not like old landmines <laughs> yeah. either. Gasoline landmines, the worst kind. Yep, the, yep, yep. So the company follows up on them. Scott shoots an arrow at the Jeep. I don't know if he was trying to aim or his aim was off. It hits the Jeep. Wow. So they give chase, and then they realize, hey, he's in a landmine field. Let him do it himself. Blow himself up. But the sun is so just... Jacked up on adrenaline, he runs after him, <laughs> shooting at him, and uh, he gets shot with an arrow and like through the shoulder. He drops his gun on a landmine and just blows himself <laughs> away. <laughs> and uh, Scott tells Todd to leave him alone. Run! I'm not leaving. I know a good hiding place again. Yeah. And uh, they they run after. They go to some cave, and we see that her brother's hiding in the cave as well. It's uh, when he's scared in front of a gold Buddha statue. And uh, Scott tells them they are hunting him as well. His brother's like at first, like he's one of them. He's one of them. And it was like evil white people. That's what I always say. (laughs) Uh, We noticed at this time they lost track of the signal, and it's nighttime, so they're gonna make camp. So Todd takes care of Scott some more. Tomorrow we cross the border. Then what? Then I leave you. That's what you want, right? 
and they're giving each other the eyes. <laughs> and then we see that uh, a little bit of Aldridge's background. Uh, the CIA didn't like his talents. They thought he was too theatrical. <laughs> he did seem uh, pretty theatrical. I mean, oh, like yeah. crushing the scorpion. Was oh, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Barehanded crushing. Uh, and then uh, it talks about how this all started. It basically started with some prisoners, and then they grew the business from it. And uh, the Madden guy was never in the service because he couldn't pass the psych evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> and then he basically calls them, uh, what does he say? He basically calls them pansies or yeah, something. Yeah, he calls them pussies, I think. Uh, that's it's what I was going like, to say. Yeah. I thought he called them pussies, but I can't remember. Uh, Scott is having nightmares about the match again, screaming Johnny in his sleep. Todd covers his mouth and wakes him up. He tells her the story. She comforts him. Next, uh, early in the morning, he wakes up. No one is there. He lifts up his shirt. Something's gone. Uh, the rubies in the belt, I guess. Uh, the bad guys Did have he mention that he had rubies on his belt? Yeah, I, I have no clue. I don't think he did. But, like, in the beginning, though, when, when they were finding, like, during the Todd killing the dad scene, mm-hmm. he, like, lost the belt in rubies, and they were, like, sitting there. So I thought, oh, they're going to pick him up. But then it was just like, nope, uh, whatever. We're not going to explain that, why we Editing. took a shot of it on the ground. Yeah. Editing error. Yeah, definitely. So when says he killed Wes for the ruby, uh, the rubies because uh, they get caught. You know, Wes and Ty are caught up on a railroad now. They get hit with a shovel. Ouch. Yeah, they're just getting spanked with a yeah, shovel. Yeah, man. Scott <laughs> hears this and is slowly creeping his way through the railroad track while the bad guys are asking where he's at. He sees the programmer who's filming for whatever reason, sneaks yeah. up behind him, pulls his gun, and uh, grabs the camera. He's and... filming from the bottom of the railroad track. Like, yeah, yeah. Where you couldn't see anything. You can't even see anything. You can just hear the voices. That's it. And then on top of that, with that little GoPro, it's like, that's not going to pick up those voices. I'm yeah. sorry. But, yeah, whatever. Let's... By far the most unrealistic uh, yeah, aspect yeah, of this film. This whole film, that's the most <laughs> unrealistic. That's I was like, okay, yeah, you've I'm lost done. me. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally done. <laughs> so he takes the programmers hostage. They just want to shoot him. But Aldridge is like, hey, this is bad for business when our clients end up dying. So they don't. So they release the brother and sister team and the rubies, and they run off. And then there's a crazy lady, and Top pushes her brother down a landscape, tells him to meet him by the river. Yeah, which made no sense, too. Like, nope. why not just double-team her and beat her Yeah, ass, I know, but... right? Yeah. And then they start fighting on this rusted old train, which was pretty cool. I like I The that. conclusion of the fight was uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, man. <laughs> So Wes is fighting with men, and they pull guns on each other as the girl are fighting, and uh, Toss stomps her between the, the rail, rail cars. cars yeah. and She, like, folds in half and gets her neck impaled yeah. on a piece of uh, metal, metal debris. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, and she dies dead. Gurgly. Scott shoots his gun off on the side of Madden's head, which I did like this because he was like, ow, my ear. Yeah. And uh, I mean, realistically, both of them would be like, ow, Oh, yeah, ear. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Realistically, everyone would have been like, ah, why are you shooting at me? <laughs> And uh, he jumps off the tracks into the river. They all meet up on some flotation device raft, yeah. you know, of wood and whatnot that just happened to, to be there. Uh, Madden sees the dead lady. Not good. <laughs> Scott takes the microchip out of the GoPro and saves it for evidence. He throws the GoPro, and it ends up finding itself on shore all yeah. of a sudden. With just just so happens to be where the baddies are at. And the other guys and are like, what's this? immediately realize it's his camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Like, we know this is... Aldridge gets pissed, and... Uh, he punches the programmer, and then he just stabs him in the throat. And so he's like, congratulations, you're the last hunter to the bullfighter. <laughs> and then he sees you're tracking him with this. You have no honor. And the bullfighter pulls out a sword and says, nobody calls me a spick. I'm a Dago. Yeah, probably the best line in the movie. <laughs> yeah, man. And then uh, we, we move over to a campsite by the river, a military campsite. The three know that they can't pass through. They'll get caught. So they sneak off to the side. A Dreep drives by. It's all the baddies in it. Uh, how the hell did they find us again? And we see the GPS like mixed in with the rubies. He gives the rubies to Tan Win, and he takes the GPS signal for himself. He's like, I finally found out what I'm fighting for. So he get, gets by a huge thing of explosions and a bunch of barrels there, and uh, he cracks a hole in one. It's leaking all over the place, uh, finds a flare gun. <laughs> shoots at it he's a crack shot up. with it too. oh yeah yeah seriously he can he's good at a flare gun but not at a, a crossbow no. or no no a bow and arrow he shot with the at the bow and arrow oh yeah he did a john woo leap with the yeah uh... <laughs> yeah he did another yeah. john woo homage. i know yeah very much so uh he takes off in a boat they start to follow and then there's that explosion the soldiers start chasing him on a boat the by the bullfighter finds Tot, and when he takes off all his weapons but a sword and grabs a canvas blanket <laughs> And uh, 
wing gets sliced right in the back for charging. And why do you charge after? You don't charge you don't, the bullfighter. You don't charge the bullfighter, you idiot. <laughs> Guess he doesn't know anything about bullfighting. No. Uh, we see the helicopter's now chasing, and Aldridge is shooting at him. The bullfighter stabs one in the leg. I thought he hit him basically in the artery. It made it look like he was yeah. just like, oh, you know what? <laughs> uh, he was so precise in the shot that he did on his leg mm-hmm. to stab him at. And then Ty comes from behind and clubs him with a uh, plastic jug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he just, apparently just lost like, his sword. Yep. And then he's like strangling. I don't know. The yeah, yeah. Then scene, he's yeah. yeah. They start fighting. He and Ta. The, meanwhile, the helicopter shooting at Wes in the boat. When stabs the bullfighter with a spear, says, "I ain't no bull," and then stabs <laughs> him through the chest. Uh, meanwhile, Wes is getting shot at in all directions. He gets off the boat. A soldier confronts him. He takes him out along with a dozen more. And this is yeah, where really it's really just goes total Rambo. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of like we're saying like the comparison between this and Rambo. You have a uh, character haunted by his demons goes to Southeast Asia. Yep. Finds love with a local, finds out that he can't escape his past, that he mm-hmm. has to fight his personal demons, finds out that he has to shoot at least 30 or 40 uh, Southeast Asian men yeah. in order to find peace. <laughs> yep. That's exactly how it goes. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, who knew he was so good with an M16, you know? Oh, I know, man. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> where did Hidden that talent. come from? Seriously, what training is that in? That's the, he, he watched, uh, what, what was the movie with uh, Christian Bale? Oh, oh, with the gun, with fu. The gun equilibrium. gun fu, equilibrium, the gun Thank fu, you. yeah, yeah gun or fu. gun kata, yeah, gun kata, gun kata. That's what it was. Yep, watched a lot of gun kata. <laughs> Definitely, uh, he gets on the bridge between Cambodia, uh, Cambodia, uh, <laughs> Myanmar, and Thailand. Aldridge jumps off the helicopter with Madden, and they're waiting for him. Fuck you, Aldridge, I win. Wait, <laughs> nope, wrong direction. <laughs> Aldridge has the gun from the first hard target, the one shot. Yeah, that I really liked. Yeah, they brought it back. He grabs some poor dude who's trying to hide, shoots him from behind. Poor bastard. Yeah, I felt bad for that guy. And then he grabs some kid, and, and Wes is like, let him go. And there's white doves flying all around him as he comes out. <laughs> Uh, the memory card. Oh, it's safe. It's up my ass. Madden's like, let me help you with that. <laughs> Beats him up. And he's like, that wasn't my ass. Yeah, got <laughs> what him. A, what a weird action line to have. <laughs> that wasn't my ass. Yeah, that wasn't my ass. Oh, man. Should have been that... in quotes or in the back of the DVD or something. Yeah, seriously, man. Aldridge is talking shit about Wes's friend. Uh, and then he's like, hey, bring the beer. You know, Baylor, I'm going to enjoy watching you get your ass kicked. Five people, four guys and a girl. Which he makes kind of like a, a sexist, a, a sexist remark. yeah, man. Which I mean, to Van be fair, Dan never really did. So. No, but he did. He, in fairness, he did beat her ass though. Oh, he did, <laughs> along with everyone else. But she was the only one who gave him trouble. That's true. So, so yeah, man, I hope you learned a lesson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we all learned sexist a lesson. Bastard. <laughs> it was a good fight scene, though. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was I good. mean, it was utterly unnecessary. It wasn't kickboxer retaliation fight. Scene, no, I mean, like it was just so weird. Like, yeah, it was during it was, the standoff. Was, hey, here's some of my five friends. Yeah. Go fight them. I want like... a beer break. Here. <laughs> yeah. And now it's Madden's turn, and he easily takes them. Yeah, oh, which was so anticlimactic. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, build him up to just not even like have a decent fight scene between the two. Yep. Takes him down and uh, chokes him from behind. Audrey comes to shoot him from behind, turns around, shoots Madden, uh, which, you know, that gun's so powerful, it went through that poor dude. Yeah, you know <laughs> why the hell did it not go through Madden and hit Obviously Scott? Obviously, Madden's just too. He's thick. just so thick. Yep, thick, definitely. T h i c c. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> now he's punching Aldridge to death as he's thinking of his fight with his friend, and he hears the background of the girlfriend yelling, "Don't do it!" Yeah, and then so, he... so you think he's not going to yeah. kill him? Yeah, you think he's going to have a come to Jesus moment? Be like, <laughs> no, that's the wrong thing to do. There's no honor in GPS tracking. <laughs> uh, and then he grabs the bullet, puts it into the gun, and he's like, "You have a two minute head start." Aldridge is coughing, spitting blood. Ninety seconds. <laughs> Slowly starts to walk, then stops. Sixty seconds. <laughs> Turns around. You're going to have to kill me, Baylor. The military comes in on the bridge. Aldridge instructs them to kill the man. Ta starts running. She runs to the general. She says she has the money, gives it to him. He tells the military to lower their weapons. You dirty motherfucker. <laughs> Aldridge steals the gun from the, the general. The soldiers shoot him to death. Somehow yeah. they all have perfect aim. Yeah, Do they not totally clip miss anyone yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> they hug. It's all done. She paid the general. 
but she gives Scott the missing rubies. So did like she really pay him? Did she pay him half? Did she like was there nothing? Was it stones in that bag? I don't know. I think she said something about how like you have to help find the other half of the stones that were lost. Or okay, something. yeah, yeah, because like, she yeah she's like oh the other half and then there's missing rubies and she hands them to him. Well, you're a good man, Wes. She walks off. He looks at the rubies and he looks off in the distance. Next scene, we have some kids training. He gets a postcard from Kay, <laughs> which is the girlfriend that's like the first time I heard her name. Yeah, the whole thing. Uh, she's basically it's a over voice shot, a voiceover of her being like, "I can't forgive you because there is nothing to forgive for." <laughs> yeah. What an understanding woman. Yep, very much so. <laughs> yada yada yada. Good feelings everywhere. Oh, by the way, P.S. Thanks for the beach house. <laughs> he then goes to teach. These... I guess that would make me more understanding too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, he uh, teaches some kids on a boat how to kick. It's like it's a it's a raft being pulled by a boat. Yeah, it was very strange. R- really interesting. Ta like, comes in with some water, and it's break time, and uh, it shows a shot of them with the house boat being pulled by the little the little uh, ferry. And yeah, a little tug. Little tug boat. Yeah, and uh, fade it fades out. out. Yep. <laughs> and then we get some after credit scenes of uh, showing the city, Scott walking around. Yeah, it wasn't really after. It was just like footage. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, was, what, God what, damn, yeah. the movie's not over yet? No. Yeah, what's going but on But no, here? it was. They were just yeah, showing yeah, it He after. gets some soup. <laughs> he watches a train drive by. Then he walks along some old tracks with the train behind him. He just waves at it and, <laughs> and then jumps on the back of it and goes to his old house. And that's it. Yep. The end. So yeah, man, that's Hard Target too. Uh, what On a scale of... When to ten splits, what would you give it? Well, I mean, it wasn't a, I don't know. It, it lacked really any of the humor that the first movie had, which is what yeah, made it so man. entertaining. Yeah. And uh, the villain in this was no Lance Hendricks, and I can say oh, that. Oh, like, yeah, you're right. I don't know. It was it was passable. Yeah. The John Woo, like, uh, you know, like the doves everywhere and the gun that was used in the first hard target gave it bonus points. So mm-hmm. I guess I'd probably give it like maybe a 6.5. Same, yeah, totally. yeah, totally. It was same. the it was the John Woo homage yeah. that gave it the extra point. Yeah, five. yeah, I like, did like I did like the gun at the end, and you know, I mean, it's an action film, so mm-hmm. I, I would watch this. I don't know. It was, just, it was anyway. like it was a good half an hour too long. They kept repeating yeah, they the did. same plot point over. Yeah, and over. an hour and forty four minutes. It's just like you don't. It need needs. This, yeah, man. they could have cut out fifteen minutes. Yeah, easily. definitely, easily, easily. Uh, and I, I don't know. Some of it they could have rearranged. They didn't have to have so many killers. Yeah, uh, or at least better, better written out. killers. Like yeah, yeah, man. And I, I don't know. A little, a little bit better of a fight between Madden and Wes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but whatever. Yeah, there's a better fight between him and uh, the oil heiress. Yeah, Sophia was her name. Yeah, she was throwing in some good licks. Yeah, there. man. Yeah, yeah, that was good. She was good. Now I got to go watch Doomsday. Again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so into trivia now. The film features doves, an homage to John Woo, director Yo. of the first Hard Target film. Woo is known for his use of doves in a lot of his films. Robert Nepper's character, Aldridge, uses the same single load gun in the movie as Lance Henriksen, done in Hard Target 1. It's called a Thompson Center Arms Contender Single Shot. Those are really expensive, by the way. Are they? They're like twelve, thirteen hundred 1300 bucks. Dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. Scott Atkins and JCVD were both in Expendables 2, and both were the main characters in the Hard Target movies. Okay. Mm-hmm. The boat chase scripted in the original Hard Target, but then was changed to a horse chase was used in this movie, an homage to John Woo. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize right, that. I give it that. They have a bigger budget. Also, this was a Universal Studios film, too. Like, I was really surprised to see a big name mm-hmm. attached to it. I'm like, oh, hey, man. So they're still they're still making movies <laughs> in theaters. <laughs> well, I will say this: uh, I, they don't have any quotes, so we can't give any quotes. I think we we did the the quotes for it anyway. Yeah, I think we did much. it justice. I don't know what's going to be our next film to review. We might we might try to do No Retreat, No Surrender two. If Who it's knows? Actually, a sequel to the yeah, if, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This this is gonna be weird. So I don't know if I explained this when we're doing the sequels and prequels and whatnot to the Van Damme movies. We're really just doing the ones that were Van Damme had a lot of time in, like the basically movie starred him, not the ones that are basically oh Van Damme was in this for like five minutes and yeah. so now it's like eh, I don't feel like doing something like that. Yeah. So really, our our sequels range from uh, Time Cop. We have Bloodsport, Cyborg, Cyborg, No Retreat, No Surrender, 
Uh, maybe Street Fighter. I'm going back and forth on that oh, one. Oh, I don't really want to review. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I guess we could because we'll it would see. be funny to do. Yeah, that movie true. was so damn yeah. bad. <laughs> well, yeah, so, yeah. So, so I mean, it's supposed to be a sequel. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. How don't it they goes. like pronounce Shadowloo differently in it? Or I can't remember I now. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to think anymore. And I said Kickboxer Bloodsport. Anyway, so. There you have it. That's, Universal that's what we're Soldier. Do. Universal Soldier. The, we, we basically already reviewed them except for the two made-for-TV movies, which yeah. I'm excited for if we can find them. I've never seen them. I know them. they're supposed to be really bad. Hell so yeah. We'll see how it goes. But that does it. That's it. I will not take any more of your time. I am John. And I am Jeff. And you've been listening to another episode of the Jean Pod Van Damme cast. That's not my ass. <laughs> <laughs>